This is the Bentley Continental GT Speed. Always been a car I've admired, but I can't lie, it's not always been an automatic choice for me. Growing up as a kid and getting into cars, I kind of gravitated more towards the exotic hardcore stuff. Ferraris, Aston Martins, Corvettes. I've always liked the Continental, but to me, it was more a car that your dad might drive. But having grown up a little bit, what I've noticed is that all kinds of people love the Continental. Young, old, rich, poor, Premier League footballers, their wives. It just has widespread love and adoration. And I'm starting to think maybe I'm the odd one out. In the flesh, when you're faced with a Bentley Continental GT, you begin to appreciate just what other people see in this thing. This, the 2016 version, is as stunning as ever, more so as it packs a host of small but significant tweaks to enhance what was already a quite extraordinary package. A unique package, a package that doesn't look like anything else on the road. This front grille surround is thinner than it was on previous models, while the lower section of the bumper has a more sweeping blade-like design. At the side, we have brand new directional alloys, as well as a new B-shaped vent, which sits just above the model derivative, which in this case is the speed. And if we move to the back, we can see this version has a more pronounced boot spoiler. And on the V8S and speed models, you get a fancy new rear diffuser. This car didn't need a whole new wardrobe or plastic surgery. The changes here are equivalent to wearing a new tailored suit or getting your teeth whitened. Looking at the 2016 version is like looking at someone you haven't seen in a while and noticing something different about them, not quite being able to put your finger on what it is, but acknowledging they look amazing. The interior of the Continental GT Speed is incredibly special. You feel really privileged to be here, but also that you belong. From the moment you sit down, the seatbelt assist feature passes the belt to you to make it easier to connect, and it's a great welcome. The best thing about it all is the attention to detail. Everything looks great from a distance, but when you look closely, you'll see that everything has a lot of love lavished on it. You get this knurling, a kind of crinkled finish on the gear selector knob and on the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel and on the key, reminding you that this whole car was built by humans who give a damn rather than just robots who are building it because they're programmed to. The highlight for me is this section here. In most cars, you get a couple of cup holders, which can look quite ugly when they're empty, but Bentley's filled it with this quite amazing sunglasses holder. There's a real heft to it. You feel like you could bludgeon someone to death with this thing. I pick it up and I just think, I'll never be able to afford a pair of glasses as expensive as this case. And that's what you want in a luxury car, decadence. There are three distinct parts to the cabin. The dashboard has a really unusual shape to it, meaning the passenger and driver feel like they get their own separate space. The middle section, meanwhile, houses your information stack. Here, old school meets new school with vintage vent controls and an up-to-date infotainment display and control buttons. Interior changes for the 2016 model are pretty minuscule. You get an optional sports steering wheel, bigger gear shifters, a new Breitling clock, a new style of quilting on the seats, and optional in-car Wi-Fi. The changes are minimal, but again, there's no need to reinvent the Continental GT because no other car looks like this anyway. Power in the Continental GT Speed comes not from a piddly little four-cylinder or from a V8 or a V12, but from a whopping great big six-liter twin-turbocharged W12 engine. And you can really feel that power, even without having to go fast. There's just a real presence to this car. You stick it in normal drive mode and it wafts along confidently with a slight burble from the exhaust. But what I like to do is stick it into sport mode on the transmission and that opens up the valve slightly and gives you a low burbling, almost a howl. So when you accelerate, you get a sound that I kind of liken to an old school fighter plane. It's a fantastic noise that puts a massive smile on your face and attracts attention everywhere you go. 
not in a shouty way, but in a classy, refined, confident kind of manner. And regardless of your speed, it just cuts through the gears in that eight-speed ZF automatic box like butter. It feels like you're in a train. You could be doing 10 miles an hour in this car and feel like nothing could stop you. The GT Speed is the most brutish, fastest Bentley there has ever been. The engine puts out 626 brake horsepower and 820 newton meters of torque. A Porsche 911 Turbo S, the fastest 911 there is, only puts out 560 horses and 700 newton meters. I know that's a different type of car, but the fact that top spec Porsche comes nowhere near this should show you exactly what kind of animal you're dealing with. It's a heavy car, but even so, 0-60 comes in four seconds dead. And if you keep your foot buried in that plush carpet, it will hit 206 miles per hour. You can drive this car for hundreds of miles, thousands. Most 200 mile an hour sports cars make you wanna get out after about 50 miles because your spine's shattered or your bum feels like it's been sat on hard concrete for two weeks. But this thing, it's a high speed hammock. It's a 200 mile an hour chaise lounge. It feels like a business jet, except you're the pilot. As for handling, this thing's a character, hugely impressive. It weighs nearly two and a half tons, and in a sports car, that's crazy obese. But it still feels agile. You can throw this thing into a corner at around the same speed as any other sports car. And what happens is, you'll absolutely soil your underwear because you'll turn in and suddenly feel all that weight. But then something else happens. The GT Speed copes with it. The GT Speed, with its amazing 4x4 system, turns in, it grips, and it gets you through those bends. You don't quite realize how much speed you can carry through a corner until you do it in a Continental GT Speed. But where this car really excels is in the way it just wafts along. This is a car that was built to make effortless progress, to cruise along in elegant, refined fashion. And that's why I've come out here tonight in the dead of night just to kind of be at one with the car, enjoy it, and enjoy the road. Occasionally, a little bit of road will open up and you plant your foot. The engine roars and it reminds you there's plenty, plenty in reserve. There's not a lot of things you can argue with when it comes to the Continental GT Speed. The price may be one thing you could quibble about. 206,000 pounds for 206 miles an hour seems a little bit excessive. By that logic, an 18,000 pound Ford Focus would max out at 18 miles per hour. A Fiesta would only do bicycle speeds. But to judge it in those terms, we'll be missing the point completely. This is a car that can handle anything you throw at it. Fast, slow, aggressive, calm, sporty, laid back. It does everything, and it does everything with a composure that very few cars can match. I might not quite have been aware of this car's charms as a youngster, but having spent a little bit of time with it, I understand the appeal. This is a car that doesn't shout as loud as a Lambo or look as fierce as a Ferrari. Not because it's inferior, but because it doesn't need to. It forges its own path. Whereas those cars are slightly one-dimensional, focusing primarily on performance or looks, the Continental delivers in several areas. It'll do 200 miles per hour, but you can also use it every day. It'll attract attention, but it will also blend in. It's a high performance car that's also the height of luxury. To miss out on the Continental GT Speed is to miss out on a car that is the very definition of understated excellence. And with theory, a man might think that the interior is inferior. You guess it's nice. But before you even get inside this breathless ride, you're mesmerized by the fact it's got suicide doors. Such elegance, plus something to protect you from the elements. Oh, you were ready for the floors? My friend, you ain't even ready for the floors.